If you're familiar with the recent Five Nights at Freddy's games, then I'm sure you're at least briefly acquainted with El Chip's Fiesta Buffet. Featured as a location in Security Breach and on advertisements in other games such as Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night, El Chip's Fiesta Buffet is a seemingly successful food chain in the world where FNAF takes place. That is, we see plenty of ads for it across multiple games, and it touted a big enough name to have its own section in the Freddy Fazbear Mega Pizzaplex food court, so we can assume it is a big deal. But what's the deal with it? Well, as the name implies, and as we can grasp by the Taco Tuesday sign outside the door in Security Breach, $99 for a taco platter? And I thought the $12 milkshakes were ridiculous. No wonder there's ATMs outside the front door. The chain specializes in Mexican food. Or the fast food variant. Its closest equivalent might be, like, Taco Bell, or that's the feeling I got. Their mascot is El Chip himself, a sombrero-wearing, mandolin-playing, beaver animatronic. Not much is known about his personality, because while El Chip's been mentioned in a few games, he was only physically present in one. So let's start from that first introduction. Both El Chip and his franchise were introduced in Pizzeria Simulator, which is technically the only time we see the physical animatronic in person. El Chip is one of the most expensive animatronics, alongside Music Man and Funtime Chica. He has high entertainment and atmosphere and no liability risk, making him the second best animatronic behind Funtime Chica. You can stick him on stage and leave him be. And that pretty much sums up El Chip's whole presence in Pizzeria Simulator. But like many of the animatronics, he returns in Ultimate Custom Night as a threat you can go up against. Well, in a matter of speaking. Turning him on just causes his ads to occasionally pop up on your monitor, with them getting more frequent the higher he's turned up. Because of this, El Chip doesn't have a jump scare. He really is harmless. One thing to note is that in El Chip's description, it says he's here to promote his new restaurant. This kind of feels like it's hinting that El Chip was strictly a rental who is only now getting a restaurant of his own. I would also say it's a reference to Security Breach, but it's unclear how much time passes between Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night, and Ultimate Custom Night and Security Breach. Though, this might actually sum up El Chip's motives for every game. It's all just to support and advertise his own brand. In Help Wanted, he has a cameo on a bag of El Chip's chips. While this seems like a small detail, this might back up the idea that El Chip's Fiesta Buffet is more well-known, something that is only reinforced in Security Breach. While there is no El Chip to be seen in person, El Chip's appears on the top floor of the atrium in Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, and must be passed through if you're pursuing the prize counter mission. The restaurant is rather small, with only a staff bot, though it can summon the Glamrocks to pursue you. Freddy, however, cannot enter inside because the door is permanently unable to open more than halfway. Though I have been able to spawn Freddy in the next door arcade after the mission is over, so you can technically walk him in that way. But more on Ill Chips itself. It's a rather small restaurant with a counter directly ahead of you as you walk in and a little kitchen area behind it. To the right are the tables and eating area, along with the security door that leads to the Superstarcade. Upon walking in, you are immediately hit by its cheerful music, exclusive to the location, and the specific theming. Neon signs shaped like cacti decorate the walls, and there's even a large El Chip pinata statue in the back. The most notable thing here is the Monty Fizzy Faz hidden in the kitchen, which permanently boosts your stamina. And since it's one of only four stamina upgrades in the entire game, you're gonna want to get it. El Chips is one of the first locations we actually saw of the Mega Pizzaplex, being shown off in the NVIDIA Locations trailer. In fact, it is in that trailer that we see the beta restaurant, where it used to connect directly to the arcade. This was changed, like changing the entrances to elevators, to disguise loading areas. The El Chips in the NVIDIA trailer is a lot brighter and much more well-detailed, with games visible in the background and a sombrero-wearing staff bot rolling around. Though, as admirable of a set piece as El Chips is, it isn't used for anything except to pass through to get to the prize counter, as the main entrance way to both it and the arcade are closed up. Still, it's a pretty cool little excursion. And that's the story of El Chips Fiesta Buffet and El Chip himself the little restaurant chain running alongside and hand-in-hand -hand with Freddy's, slowly growing into something sizable enough to plant itself in the food court of the Mega Pizzaplex, and perhaps someday we'll see him again.
is what I would say if we were at the end of the story. And we are when it comes to this beaver character. But the truth is, he wasn't the first. There was another beaver before El Chip took stage in Pizzeria Simulator. Only a few games ago, technically. So let's step back all the way to FNAF World. Now, I don't think I need to introduce you to FNAF World. It's a FNAF RPG spin-off game where you unlock animatronic characters, fight enemies, and travel around the world. But did you know that this game has multiple endings? There were quite a few endings. The basic one, the hard one, the clock-themed one that led into a secret about FNAF 3, one where two Golden Freddies meet and the world collapses, and one secret ending where we are very suddenly and very violently pulled into a battle with an unknown threat, one we don't even see coming. To stumble across this ambush, you have to enter the northward section of the Mysterious Mines and have a key that you can only get in the Funhouse and Pinwheel Circus. Basically, you can't get here until the end of the game. You're walking along the furthest wall on the left side, to the point where you can't even see yourself, and then suddenly, boom, a giant hunk of chrome flings itself at you and the boss fight begins. This giant mechanical monstrosity being a metal animatronic in the vague shape of a red-eyed beaver. His name? Chipper's Revenge. The boss fight is a pretty intense one, but considering this is towards the end of the game and you had to go through the funhouse, meaning you likely collected most of the characters, it is very possible to defeat this threat. Though when you do, you aren't rewarded with loot or chips. You are confronted by Chipper's revenge himself. And he says this, It was never fair. It was supposed to be me. It was always supposed to be me. My world was lush and beautiful, full of strange and colorful creatures. But no, that wasn't enough for you. You wanted to be scared. You wanted to feel dread. And what happened to me? What happened to us? Obscurity. You haven't seen the last of me. Freddy Fazbear isn't the one who will be sharpening his teeth on your bones. It will be me. It will be me. The machine then malfunctions, and this is the end. But what is he talking about? Someone who stumbled across this boss with no context might be totally confused to who this guy is. And unfortunately, this game doesn't hold the answers. Because there is a Mr. Chipper in the Halloween update. Like the other characters introduced there, his code has been reused for one of the many games you have to complete to unlock him. But it gives no further context to who he's supposed to be, though he is clearly the beaver that Chipper's Revenge was based off. It looks like we're gonna have to go back further, past even the original FNAF, where rumors of a cancelled beaver animatronic have long been forgotten, back before FNAF even existed. This is where we find our answers in the form of Chipper and Son's Lumber Co., a game predating even the first Five Nights at Freddy's. See, before FNAF was even a thing, Scott made a few games and animations. Some of the more notable ones being games such as The Desolate Hope, The Desolate Room, and of course, Chipper and Sons. While having cartoonish animal characters that might bear a slight resemblance to the Freddy designs going forward, make no mistake, Chipper and Sons were a completely different beast to FNAF. It wasn't a horror game. It was a cutesy time and resource management game. Despite the larger name in the title, you don't play as Chipper himself, you play as Tyke, his son, as he took over the lumber company from his father. Which is probably for the best as established in the game, Chipper pretty much spins his life off in another galaxy. He's pretty detached from reality, about as smart as a plank of wood, and how he ran a successful lumber business on his own considering he might have eaten his own wife on accident, we'll never know. By the way, Chipper tells a lot of tall, ridiculous tales, so don't take him too seriously. You, as Tyke, plant and harvest trees, even making automatons to cut them down for him. Some of these might be familiar from FNAF World, including the Lumberbots, robots who look like Chipper, who were made to harvest wood. The best versions of them are plated in chrome, resembling Chipper's revenge, though on a much smaller scale. Tyke also makes friends of various colorful characters such as Seabill, the Termite King, and uh, some other strange and kooky characters from the games. Also, Chipper continuously tries to hook his son up on dates. Tyke goes on a series of bad dates before finally, at the end of the game, meeting a nice beaver girl who he becomes smitten with. It doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, it wasn't, but it wasn't great either. It was cute and colorful, 
but a bit clunky to manage. Likely because of the fact that it was originally designed to be a mobile game. There was also a significant amount of waiting, especially in the beginning before you get areas unlocked and have machines to cut trees down. The game was technically free, but it also had a paid plus mode where you got extra items when you started. Something not unheard of in the mobile game space. Unsurprisingly, the game didn't initially garner much attention. Not until it wound up on Steam Greenlight. Though there it received plenty of criticism. And again, not all without merit. I have played Chipper and Sons myself, and I didn't end up finishing it. It wasn't awful by any means, but Steam Greenlight was, well, they got a lot of really rough, low-budget games, and people were starting to get critical and try to crack down on them. Especially for a game that would, perhaps, expand through Greenlight and then be sold at a price point. Though, these critiques weren't just about the simplistic and destabilized gameplay. They were also about the characters, the animations, the whole package. People found Chipper and his son quite creepy. And that's when something was said. I don't know who said it, but someone said it. And when it was said, it sunk the final nail into Chipper's coffin. It was the end of him. The characters look like animatronic dolls. And at that moment, Chipper's fate was sealed, because that is supposedly what got the ball rolling on the initial idea for Five Nights at Freddy's, which led up to everything we have now. Every FNAF character, every storyline, every game, every book. In a way, it all goes back to Chipper's. Chipper's grave was the dirt in which Freddy's tree was planted. And with that in mind, everything past that suddenly falls into place. A beaver animatronic was supposed to appear in FNAF 1, but it did not. In FNAF World, Chipper takes his revenge, vindictive that it was his failure that led to Freddy's success while he was the one lost to time. Though after this, Mr. Chipper does reappear in the Halloween update, though without a sizable role. It was not until the introduction and rebranding into El Chip that Chipper basically had a part in the series again. And again, it wasn't exactly him. It's unclear if Chippers exists in FNAF World, or if, like, El Chip is just a brand new independent thing. By which I mean, the FNAF World Revenge reference is directly referring to Chipper and FNAF in a meta sense, but we don't know if Chipper actually exists in-universe or was like a Freddy's character. But that aside, so that was Chipper's fate, was it? To face concept unification and rebranding into El Chip. Well, perhaps not. In Freddy in Space 2, we see a brief cameo of Chipper, Tyke, and the Termite King flying by on a ship. Now, I'm not saying this means that Chipper is any kind of major character. His role is very much minuscule compared to his protege, El Chip. But that does mean that Chipper himself hasn't been entirely forgotten. And in a way, being remembered as a character with their own franchise alongside Freddy's is sort of a plus. Better than to be lost to time. Especially when it's one of the characters who did inadvertently jumpstart the franchise. Now, this is the end of Chipper's and L. Chip's story. But I'm not quite done. Today I'm doing something that I have never done before. I am going to step away from the official stuff and talk about a fan game. So, remember how I said Chipper and Sons was pretty clunky and it's hard to get back into, even if you are curious? Well, there is an alternative for the eager beaver wanting to sink their teeth into some red-hot woodcutting action. And that would be Tyke and Sons Lumber Co. Tyke and Sons is a fan game sequel to Chipper and Sons created by Mixless. Apologies if I pronounced the name wrong. You play as Mike, son of Tyke and grandson of Chipper, as he takes over the logging business for himself. And perhaps solve the mystery behind the disappearance of your grandfather. The game carries the planting, harvesting, and upgrading mechanic of the original game, but with an expanded story, which I won't spoil here, but is a significant upgrade from the original. More stuff to do, quests to complete, things to collect, and even a FNAF-esque survive the night mode, where familiar faces from Tyke and Sons creep up after dark and try to break into your house. Even though it's technically a sequel, this is the game I'd turn to if you want to try Chipper and Sons, but are going in from a Five Nights at Freddy's perspective. It really is the middleman between both. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out. Of course, you can still find the original Chipper and Sons online, too, if you're curious. I hope you enjoyed this step into the history of Freddy's and El Chips and Chippers. And here's hoping you learned something you might have not known before. This is where El Chip's story draws to a close. For now, of course. 
and time will tell what comes next. Though, all signs point to this not being the end for him, or even Chipper, perhaps. So for now, thank you for watching.